Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at how to create an interactive terminal using React. So to get started, we of course want our users to be able to input something. So we're going to add an input element and to display the output of our terminal, we're also going to um, need to do something. So we're going to add a div called terminal. And now we can actually start already. So to do that, we um, will first of all check that everything is working just fine. And as you can see, we've got an input element here. And now we want to do some styling so that it actually looks rather nice. So to do that, we're going to add a background color because we want to do this in dark mode. And we're also going to want to add a color. In this case, that is going to be white. Then we're going to add a height for our app, which is 100 viewpoint height, just so it takes up the whole screen. And that's already looking quite fine, but I think this is a bit cramped if it's so close to the edge. So we're going to add a padding of one RAM real quick. And of course, if you want to add a padding, then your site is going to become bigger. So to prevent that, we're going to say box sizing is border box, just so the padding doesn't actually grow the element, but it um, is added to the inside of the element. And now this is actually looking quite fine, but of course the terminal doesn't have this kind of an input element. So we're going to remove the styling from the input element just so it looks like a normal terminal would. So to do that, we're just going to say, okay, border, none, outline, none, margin zero padding zero this is a bit tedious but you need to do it if you want your input to look like terminal this then you're going to say background color is transparent and after setting the background color to transparent you of course want to do one more thing which is actually setting the color again because an input element unfortunately overrides the default color you've set so now this actually looks quite fine and you can type something in white on this background so this is actually everything we wanted to do so now let's get into actually implementing some logic here. So we're going to start off by actually getting some user input. And everyone who knows React, of course, knows that we're going to use use state for that. So import use state from React. And then we can just say, okay, our input is going to have a value. And that value is going to be a state element. And that state is going to be input. So input set input equals use state and the default input will of course be an empty string. So now we can say, okay, value is input. Next thing on change. So whenever the user enters something into this um, input element, we of course want to update our input value and that's going to be done using an event. So set input to e.target.value just so it's always in sync with what the user types. And as you can see, we can type this just fine and it's working. If you want to test it out even more, you can actually use it as a content of the diff real quick. And now you should see the text double right here, which is just what we want. So now we of course also want to have some output. So to do that, we're just going to say, okay, output and set output is also use state and an empty use state to be exact. And then we can say our terminal contains this output. In normal JavaScript, you just do that using inner text. In this case, we can use output, which is a bit nicer. Now, in a normal terminal, you'd of course enter your command, and then you press enter to actually execute it. And to do that, we're going to add an on key down event, and that's going to be a function again that gets e as a parameter. And we're first of all going to check, okay, if e that key, so the key that was pressed, is equal to enter, then do something. So first of all, we're going to test if this is actually working by doing window.alert test. And now if we hit enter, we should see that this pop-up appears. So our logic is working. So now we can actually change the output in here. So just to test things even more, we can say, okay, our output is now the word output. And if we type something and press enter, and what output will appear. And also, we of course also want to change the value, uh, the input to be empty when you press enter, so we can do that as well. And now we are actually a bit closer already because now we can manipulate the output and the input. And there's only one step left to do, which is actually changing the output dependent on what it should display. And to do that, we're gonna say, okay, const new output equals an empty string, for, uh, first of all, and then we can manipulate it in any way we like. So now we can say, okay, set output to new output, 
And for now, that's going to be new output equals output plus a line break because we of course want every entry to be on the new line. And after line break, we're going to add a little dollar symbol to indicate that this was a command that was executed. And after that, we're just going to say input. And now if we try that out, you should be able to see ls minus la, for example, that nothing is happening for some reason. So I might have made a mistake here because this, of course, can't be const. It needs to be let because we actually override it, right? So now if we just try this again, ls minus la and hit enter, then you can see it is displayed right here. And um, now comes the magic part, actually. First of all, you add a line break right here so that um, the next line break will display in the way you want so that um, your output will actually be on a new line and not the same line that you wrote your command, which would look kind of ugly, I guess. And then you can just use a switch case statement and we're going to say, okay, switch um, input and the first case could be ls and then you'd say, okay, new output plus equals whatever. Then case, I don't know, print working directory. You of course need this to be strings. Then you'd say new output plus equals whatever and all that stuff. And this is basically how you'd add commands by just saying, okay, if this case is true, I'll put that. If this case is true, I'll put that. So you of course are not gonna navigate your PC with this, but you can add some really cool like portfolio things or whatever, if you would just let the user type something and then certain output is just generated, you know? So for now, we're just gonna say, okay, ls um, will just do list of projects, for example, and uh, print working directory will say, okay, you're on my cool terminal site. You of course also can add breaks here so that um, nothing triggers multiple times. And you could also add a default case if you wanted to, that would just say new output plus equals unknown command, for example. And um, now we can actually try this out already, but it should actually not work yet. So we can do it though. So print working directory. As you can see, all of this is displayed in one line, which we of course don't want. And to do that, we're gonna need to do one more trickery in CSS, which is styling our terminal object, which is actually the reason we gave it a name. And the one thing we're gonna need to add here is word break break all which will allow us to use backslash n line breaks. Now, if we hit enter again and type test, then it still isn't working for some reason. Okay, so I found the error. I actually mixed something up here. It's not word break break all, but it's white space, free line. And now the all breaks should actually take effect if we re-render. So let's just head into here and say print working directory. And it says, you're on my cool terminal site in a new line. So that is working quite fine, actually. Now there's just one more thing, one more comfort thing we could do, which is uh, to actually always highlight the input element because how should the user know that they want to click on here, right? So to make it easier, we're first of all gonna say, okay, the width of our input is gonna be 100%, just so it takes up the whole site and it's easier to click. But if you don't want to click it, then we are going to first of all say, okay, use effect. So as soon as the um, component renders, we're going to run a function and that function will only run once. And it's going to be okay, focusing this element. So to do that, we're actually going to need one more thing, which is a ref. And that ref is going to be okay, const input ref equals use ref. And we're just going to connect it to our input. So our input element is going to get a reference of input ref. And then we can just say, okay, input ref dot current dot focus. So this focus method is basically just a method that an input element, for example, has so that you can focus it. And now if we just reload the page, then you're going to see we can type immediately. But now what if somebody type, uh, clicks out of this terminal? He can't write anymore. To do that, we can actually do one more thing, which um, depending on how big your terminal is, you would do that on a rapid diff or because our terminal takes up the whole site, we can just do it on our app. And that's gonna be an on click event listener. And that on click event listener will actually do exactly the same thing, which is saying, okay, 
run a function and do input ref.current.focus. And now, independent of wherever we click, we will always be able to type something. So now I'll just test that. So print working directory, you're on my cool terminal site. Now I can still highlight all of this stuff, at least kind of. You basically need to highlight and copy it immediately. But yeah, those are just some things you'd need to figure out for yourself. I personally think that the advantage of always um, being highlighted up here is much more important. But yeah, that's basically how you create your own custom terminal. You might want to, I don't know, add a scroll bar or whatever, like you could do right here. Overflow, auto. Now if you add content, you'd see that the site doesn't scroll, but only your app component. But yeah, these are just minor things you would need to figure out for yourself. But I think this is a really great way to add some interactive items to your page, like ls, print working directory or whatever. Just play around with it, what, uh, whatever way you like. And yeah, I hope you're having fun with this. Also, you might want to consider putting new comments on top and not on the bottom, whatever. Do what you want to do. And yeah, I hope you're having a really good day.